Okay, so I, guys, make sure you please watch this video and do what you're supposed to do in class today. Um, this classwork will be the same homework, so if you get it all done in class, you're good. We will have a quiz on tomorrow. Okay, so we're just going to continue to look at how to find the distance between the two points and how to um, find the distance, the midpoint, and the, the slope. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go formula routes on these and then, no, I'm going to go graphical routes as much as I can on these and formula routes on the other ones. So I'm going to switch in between the two on these problems so that you can see. And no matter which way you do them, you should get the same answer. So here, I'm going to do distance first. I have a graph. I'm going to plot this. And if you're not given a graph and you like the graphing way, then uh, make your own. Just quickly make your own or find, yeah, make your own right quick and make it do what it do for you. So here, this is B. So these are the two points I have and I want to find the distance. Well, I am going to use good old Pythagorean's theorem because that's just going to make life a little easier for me. Two and then one, two, three, four. So two boxes here. Or here, or if you count the lines, one, two, and then count here, one, two, three, four. So Pythagorean's theorem is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. That'll help me find this hypotenuse right there. So we get x squared, since that's what we're looking for, equals, that's this, we're going to call it x. And then the a squared is, is 2 squared plus 4 squared. It doesn't matter which ones you use. And we're going to use the line method, x squared equals 4 plus 16. And here we go, x squared equals 20. And then we're going to take the square root of 20, square root of x squared equals the square root of 20. So x equals, and you can use your scientific calculator, Desmos, and clear, square root of 20. And that's 4.47, 4 4.47, I'm rounding to the nearest hundred. And here we're just going to put units because it didn't give us any units. All right. So next, I'm going to go and do the midpoint. Midpoint is really a formula. Now, you can kind of try to guess where you think the midpoint is. You can make an estimate. I don't recommend that unless you're given a multiple choice test and you can do some process of elimination. Other than that, I highly recommend use the formula. Um, it tells you to add the two x's together and divide them by two. And I'm still not sure if this is on your formula sheet. Um, if it is, you don't have to memorize it. If it isn't, you need to get to memorize it. Okay, so let me write down the two points I'm given. I'm given one and four, which I call this A and B was five and two. All right, label this so it makes your life easier, babies, when you get ready to substitute into the formula. So here, x1 is one plus x2 is five over two, y1 is four uh, plus y2 is two over two. Six over two and six over two. So that means my midpoint is going to be three over three. And you can use your calculator. Um, let me show you how you can use the fraction key. I'm not going to actually put it in. If you have a graphing calculator, then you push alpha y equals. Here's the scientific version. There's your fraction key right there. Okay. That's three over three. That's your midpoint. And now we're going to go and do slope. And I'm going to draw a little box right here for you. So I keep it on the same page. So here, we're going to do slope. Um, remember, slope is rise over run. And I think this one is on your formula sheet. And if you can't remember, it's the change in y over the change in x. So we're just going to go do rise over run since we have a graph. If you look here, and if you notice, 
you can do this either way you want to. If you want to use what you already have, you can start at point A and then get to point B. That's cool. And you notice this line is falling, so guess what? Our slope is going to be negative. So if we look at this to get, if I start at point A and I have to go down to to help me get over to point B. So that means my rise is M equals negative 2. And then I'm going to have to run over 4, which we already calculated to get to that point. And since I ran to the right, this is going to be positive. And <clears throat> you have to be able to either break this down mentally or use your calculator to help you break it down. I'm going to do mental math. Um, I know 2 over 4 is the same as negative 1 over 2. If you need to use the calculator, babies, it is perfectly okay. So you go and you put negative 2 here and go and put 4 there and you get 1.5 or if you need the fraction version just push this convert button right here and it's negative one half and we in there so we did all three of those by using graphs except midpoint we're always going to probably use the formula for midpoint because i don't like to try to guess unless there's multiple choice on where this midpoint is all right so now we need to do the same thing for this one this one we're going to use formulas now you can decide to use the graphing method since this is already on a graph but it's your choice i'm going to do the other way so i can give the babies that like it the other way a chance to see it so this is negative four and positive four for a and then b down here is five and negative two so here is b five and negative two so i am going to go ahead and get my life together with getting my um after current we're getting my sheets so a is negative four and four and b is um five and negative two let me make sure i got that right yep we good so first thing i'm gonna do label this x1 y1 x2 y2 okay Oh, the struggle. All right. So this distance, the formula, which is on your formula sheet, and babies, you do not have to memorize this. It's some variation of what I'm getting ready to write on the paper. And if it doesn't look exactly like this, then it's going to still yield you the same answer. Just go with what you see on your formula sheet, and you'll get the same answer. So D equals... And here, the parentheses that's already there. And then you're going to go put x2 in and put it in parentheses minus x1 is negative 4. And then close it, square it, plus the parentheses that's already there. And then y2 is negative 2, close it, minus y1 is 4, close it. Then close up what was already there and put the square back. And then D, and I didn't use colors. Um, if you still need colors, then you use your colors. Do what you got to do to get where you got to go, babies. And then you can use your calculator and put that directly in. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the calculator, square root, and then I'm going to type it all in. Uh, Negative four, close it, all squared, plus um, negative two, oops. So see how I made that mistake? It does that a lot. So you have to make sure that cursor is in the right spot. And if it's not, just go back in, get it in the right spot, because you'll notice what you did. Um, four. And then squared, and it's going to be 10.8, round this to 2. And if you need to, you can push answer 2, and that'll give it to you 10.82. So here, oops, distance is equal to 10.82 units.
and that's if you use the distance form. If you use Pythagorean's theorem, you should get the same exact thing. If you didn't get this, either I messed up or you messed up. So you can check it again, and if I messed up, come show me. If you messed up, then we can figure it out. But I think I'm pretty on point with this one. Okay, so the next part asks us to find midpoint. So um, midpoint of these two points, the formula tells you to take the two x's, add them together, divide them by two. Take the two y's, add them together, divide it by two. So um, substitute in, we get negative four plus five over two comma four plus negative two over two. So you can use your calculator, you can use that fraction key and um, on Desmos or you can use your um, graphing calculator, use the fraction key. I want to use my mental math because that's just what I like to do. So negative four plus five is one half and four minus two is going to be two over two. So this reduces to one half and one. That's in non-decimal form, but if you have to graph this, then it would be 0.5 and 1. And that's your midpoint. Um, yeah, that's it. So let's go and find the slope. And we'll be done. Let's go do slope next. So slope, and it equals rise over run, which is the same thing as the change in y over the change in x. Delta, that little symbol means delta, which change. So m equals, and on your formula sheet to get the change in y, you do y2 minus y1, and the change in x is x2 minus x1. So how did I get from this point to this point? What's the distance in between this point and this point, and what's the distance in between? And then we do the ratio of those two numbers. That tells you the slope. Okay, so um, my points are, let me write them on down here, negative 4 and positive 4. That was A, and then B was 5 and negative 2, X1, Y1, X2, Y2, and now we're going to substitute into our formula, guys. So M equals make sure you put it in parentheses negative 2 minus 4 over 5 minus negative 4 which equals negative 6 and i'm using my mental math you can um you can use uh the calculator but I, I'm just, I enjoy mental math. So you can use your calculator. You can use the fraction key and just put this all in. And you won't have to worry about the, um, the breaking it down like I'm doing. You can use this key right here. And you can put it all in the calculator. Just make sure you put it in exactly like it is on your paper. And then 5 plus 4 is 9. Um, and this becomes negative 3, I mean negative 2 over... Three and as a decimal, this reduces to. And I'm gonna write this up under it. We typically don't do math this way, so I'm gonna do it the way you'll see it. Negative three. I mean negative two over three, and m is negative point six seven. Okay, now let me go confirm to make sure this slope is negative. Yep. The line is falling from left to right. And if you count, if you did it the, uh, the graph way, you can count here to here to see what it is. So you go down and then you run to the right. So your top number would have been negative. So the overall answer would have been negative. And we're done with that one. Guys, please make sure you're practicing because you're going to have a quiz tomorrow. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh... I am going to use the, I'm going to go ahead and use the formula methods on these. And then over here, I'm going to use the graphing method. So whichever way you want to do is fine. So I'm going to ignore that I have a graph here. So to find the distance, I'm going to write down these points. I'm going to go 0, 2 I'm gonna call this a and then B 
is 4 and 0. All right. So if I'm going to go distance, x, x1, y1, x2, y2, So D equals your formula. Um, it might be on your formula sheet. Then I don't know which way the formula sheet puts this on there, but either way, you're going to get the same answer. So if you decide to do it the way that I'm doing it, please don't get confused. Then you're going to get the same answer. So you can follow the formula sheet or you can follow what I'm doing. And if you notice, I'm not going to do colors for you today. If you need to do colors, then you graphic color pencils and you do colors when you substitute in if you do it this way. Okay, so we get 4, and you notice I'm putting in parentheses, anything I substitute in, 0 squared plus the parentheses that's already there, parentheses 0 goes in it, and then open up another one, put in negative 2, close the parentheses, and then square it. So D equals, and we're going to go grab the calculator, stick that in there, see what we get. struggle is real. Hold on guys, I gotta go back. If you notice my square root symbol didn't go with me. Now it's going with me. Only thing that's frustrating with the formula part is all the parentheses. But it's on purpose because you need to make sure and this will help you as you if you decide to go to college with substituting stuff in and it gets way more complicated. So you need to know where your parentheses go and the key thing is as long as you remember put things in parentheses when you substitute something in and leave the parentheses that were already in the formula there and then you're good to go um i'm not throwing out double parentheses oh anyway it just did that okay so here we have um 4.47 in these units so distance equals 4.47 units. If you use Pythagorean's theorem, you should have got the same answer. If you didn't get the same answer, double check. And then if you still didn't get it right after you double check, you didn't get what I get, then come hit me up. And we'll see who has it incorrect. Okay, so that's distance. Now let's go do midpoint. Midpoint means to take the two x's, add them together, divide it by two. Oops, not y. We're not going to divide this by y. And take the two y's, add them together, divide it by 2. Okay, so we're going to go 0 plus 4 over 2 and negative 2 plus 4 over 2. And we're going to get... 4 over 2, and negative 2 plus 4 is 2 over 2. And I'm going mental math. Of course, you can use your fraction key and put those in one at a time, and you can still get the same answer. And then 2 over 2 is 2, and this is 1. So that's your midpoint. All right. And you could have made a guess from the graph, but I strongly discourage you doing that unless it's a multiple choice test. I strongly dis discourage if it's a free response, you got to come up with that answer. So you can't just guess. And that's the middle of that large segment. Okay, let's do slope. So slope, we know that... Um, 
It represents M, which is rise over run, which is the change in Y over the change in X. And we said we were going to formula route, so we need to get what the formula is. So M, the change in Y is nothing but Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, so let me go and get that those two points. So A was 0, 2, and B was 4, comma, 0, uh, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So Y2 would be 0, X1 is 2, X2 is 4, and Y1 is 0. So M equals negative 2 over 4. So M equals negative 1 over 2. And we got it. So our slope is negative 1 half. And that was how you do that with the formulas. Now on the second one, I am going to go graphical so that we can um, do this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take a picture of it and put it on another page so that um, I can have space since I decided to go this route. Okay, so here's what we are working with. So I'm gonna go the graphical route with this one. And I'm gonna choose two points so that, since I didn't do a good job, let's choose the two endpoints. So I'm gonna call this A and I'm gonna call this B. And to find the distance, then I am gonna draw me a nice little right triangle to help my life out. Since they already gave me a graph, and they plotted everything for me. So I'm gonna use a right triangle. And I'm gonna count. So here I'm at one, two, three, four, five. So I get five. And then here I'm at one, two, three, four. Oh boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and looks like that's ten. So to get distance, I'm going to use a. I'm going to use Pythagorean's theorem. I'm going to write the c squared on this side so I can use the line method to help me get where I got to go. And this is x. x squared equals 10 squared plus 5 squared. So we get x squared equals 100 plus 25. And I'm using mental math. You guys can use your calculator. And I know that you're competent and it's substituting in the, I mean, plugging this stuff into your calculator. I'm using mental math as much as I possibly can. And you'll get better at it as you keep going to. So square root of 125. So x equals, then I'm going to go here. Square root 125. And it's 11.18. And I'm going to say units since it didn't have any units. So I found the distance. Now it's telling me to find the midpoint. Um, now, we can easily try to look at this and guess. But remember what I told you. You do not try to use the graphic method for midpoint unless they ask. There is multiple choice. If you're asked to find midpoint, then you get in here and you do the math. Because guessing graphically would probably get you the wrong answer. Because you're going to try to figure out where this line splits it, and then that would be the midpoint, or where the line segment splits it, and that would be your midpoint. Okay, so to find midpoint, we're just gonna think about exactly what that means. It means to take um, the two x's, add them together, divide by two, because that's how you get the middle, and you take the two y's, add them together, and divide them by two. And that is going to give you your midpoint. And it's an ordered pair. That's what a midpoint is. It's an ordered pair that gives you the X and Y of the middle of a line segment. 
So of course, in order if I'm gonna substitute this in, I gotta find what A, my, my A point is and what my B point is. So here you get negative two and negative, that looks like negative six. And then for the B, you get three and four. So now we're just gonna X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And let's make this do what it do. So what's the X1? Negative two. And remember, anytime you put something into a formula, put it in parentheses. Over two, Y1 is negative six plus four over two. And then here we get one half. This is my mental math. If you need to use the calculator, then go ahead. And this is negative two over two. Once again, this is my mental math. And we get one half and negative one as the midpoint. And if I do decimal form, 0.5 and negative one. All right, that's the midpoint. Next, we're gonna go and do our good old slope. So if we go up here, then we get um, slope, which is signified by M. And M equals rise over run. And M is the same as the change in Y over change in X. So we get M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Oh, you know what? We're not dealing with the formula yet, so I'm gonna leave it alone. We're just gonna use the graph since that's the route we're going. So we just need to get our change of Y and our change of X. Now, if you look here, if I start at this point, at the A, I have to go up 10 to get to B. And luckily it was already labeled or you could have just count. So the rise was 10 and since I went up, the sign is gonna be positive. The run would be the Y. That means I need to run over five to actually get to the B though. So, and since I'm going to the right, I'm gonna put positive five. So M equals 10 divided by five is two. And we're finished. Okay, so this one, I am gonna once again um, use the formula to help me uh, formulas for this one. I can plot them and then go from there, but I'm just, I just wanna use the formulas for, for this one. And then I'll do the, the, use the graph for that one. So here, I know I have a graph, but I'm not gonna use it. It says, given the points, you have two commas. So I wanna go distance first. And I want to get my point A and my point B. So my point A, I'm going to call 2, 0. And my point B, I'm going to call 4 and negative 3. Now, if you decide to use Pythagorean's theorem, then so be it, baby. Use it, and you should get the same answer. Just plot it and then see what the stuff is. Okay, my distance formula tells me to do x. Oops. And make sure you write these as subscripts and not superscripts. The two and the one down here are what we call subscripts. This two up here is called a superscript. Okay, I'm gonna label this as x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm gonna go through here and substitute in. Parentheses that was already there, I just write it back. x2 is four, so I'm substituting it in minus X1 is going to be 2, so I substitute it in, put that parentheses back, put the 2. Plus Y2 is negative 3. I put the parentheses that was already there, then I added my own. Minus, add my own parentheses, and then 0, close it, put the one that was already there, and then square. Okay, now we're going to go and hit up this calculator and see what it's going to tell us. So clear parentheses and I know I need two so we're gonna put four close 
minus, and the two is there, close, and then close it all, put the squared, plus, um, close, minus, and then zero, close it, close it all up, squared, okay, and then we get 3.6 and that 5, I'm going to the nearest 100, round to the 1, to so 3.61, and this is going to be units, all right? So I found a distance. If you use Pythagorean's theorem, you should have gotten the same thing, babies. Okay, the next one would be midpoint. Guys, I'm ha I have very high expectations of you on this because this is all we've done this week. So you should be able to master this and the circle stuff. Uh, I expect everybody to get a really good grade. And if you don't get a really good grade, that just means you're not putting in the time to do what you need to do and we spoke about that. So please, let's start doing better. Okay, so to find my midpoint, um, substitute in. So we get two plus four over two. And if, if the formula is the other way in your mind, then it doesn't matter. This is not gonna change the answer because of that plus right there. Plus is commutative, addition is commutative. Okay, y1 is zero, um, plus negative three over two, six over two, negative three over two. So we get six over two is three and negative 1.5. And there we go. And that negative three over two reduces, I mean, in decimal form is negative one over five. If you wanna leave it as negative three over two in fraction form, that's fine too. Because either one of these answers can show up on any test. So there you go. That was me using mental math. You can use your calculator that'll help you reduce. So we got midpoint, distance, and what are we using? Formula so slope. So slope, which is represented by M, is equal to rise over run, which is the same thing as change in Y over change in X. And M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And I don't believe you have to memorize this. I don't think you do. At this point, you should know whether it's on your formula sheet or not. Okay, so let me go find my points. Okay, so my points were A is 2 comma 0 and B is 4 negative three, I'm gonna label this x1, y1, x2. So m equals negative three minus zero over four minus two. So M equals negative three over two. And there we go. Now you can say M is negative 1.5. Now you can use your calculator that um, this button here and you can put all of that in and you'll get the same thing I did. I just chose to do mental math. You can put it in the calculator either way. All right, so did I find everything? Yes, we found everything. And there the slope is negative, okay. The second one is, let's go ahead and do these points. I'm gonna take a picture of this and put it on another page. So, and I am gonna use the graph method, except with um, midpoint. All right, so here I'm just going to use the endpoints and call it A and B. So 
And I want to use Pythagorean's theorem to find distance. So here you just count one, two, three, four. And count here one, two, three, four. And so you get a squared. Well, let me do it the other way. And I'm going to call this over here x. So since that's what I'm looking for, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Um, x squared equals 4 squared plus 4 squared. I'm going to use my line method to help me get this math done. So we get x squared equals 16 plus 16. x squared equals 1, 2, that's 32. And you can use your calculators, babies. And so we get x squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And so x equals, grab your calculator, oopsie, and we're going to put square root of 32 in there, and that equals 5.66. And we're done. Units. So x equals 5.66 units. If you did distance formula, you should have gotten the same thing. If you got something different, try it again. And if you still can't get this answer, um, come talk to me and we'll see who got it right. Uh, we'll work it out. We'll make it, we'll check it out for you. So this is midpoint here. Remember midpoint, I always told you to use a formula. You can kind of go in here and guess what this would possibly be. Um, and I'm thinking that it's gonna be at zero three. That looks about the middle of this segment. Um, I don't recommend you using that method unless you are doing uh, multiple choice and then you can do the process of elimination. But other than that, if it's free response, just do the math, babies. Do the math. So A is negative 2, 1. My point B is 2 and 5. Okay. So midpoint means take the two x values, add them together, divide it by two, take the two y values, add them together, divide by two. And I need to label this. x1, y1, x2, y2. So let's go substitute in negative two plus two. Uh-oh, I might be on to something. When I said what I said, um, 1 plus 5, so it's 0, comma, 0 over 2, and then 6 over 2. And you can use your calculators, babies. Oh, I hit that one right on the head. 0 and 3. And that's why I said it will probably be it about right here in the, in the middle of this segment. So we found it. Uh, last part is slope, and we're doing this graphically, so to find slope, slope is m equals rise over run, which is the same as the change in y over the change in x, and, and as you move up in math, they call this delta y, delta x. Okay, so... Guess what? So now we're going to go to this point and we're going to see how far do we have to rise up and do we have to go left or right. So if we look, we have to rise up one, two, three, four. So we know we're going to rise four. So my M and we're going up. So the four needs to be positive. And then we're going to run one, two, three, four to get to this B. Okay, so we have to run over four. And we're going to the right, so it's going to be positive. So that means our slope is 1. And we are finished. Let's see. Got another one? Oh, okay. So that is pretty much it. You can go and create your own. I'm not going to do this for you. Create your own. Put it in your notebook. I'll check it tomorrow for homework when I do homework check. All right, guys. See you. And you can answer this question here. What's the dis difference between distance, midpoint, and slope? See you guys tomorrow, and please do write and learn this stuff. Bye.